few weeks ago, you might remember that I introduced you to an activity called phylum chordata. Now, following up on that, what would come next is an activity that we called loosely grouped animals. So once the children have learned that mammals are, you know, defined by having hair on their body and they're warm-blooded, reptiles have scales on their body and they're cold-blooded and so on, now we want to introduce them to some pictures of reptiles or pictures of mammals and we have terminology cards for that. Now there are two presentations here. There's one for a child who cannot read, someone between two and four years. And then once they have finished, you know, they've finished the blue series, which I've talked about in previous uh, activities, I will put the link up here so that you can watch that video if you haven't already. Then we can take them to the activity of a reading child where they would be able to read the names of the animals and match them. Now you will notice as we do this activity that a lot of the words are non-phonetic. They are, pretty much all of them are non-phonetic. They are long words, but children sound out the first couple of sounds and then they make an intelligent guess because they know what the animal is. So it's a great way for them to learn new words, to develop an understanding of sight words, to widen their vo vocabulary. There is so much that they're learning from these activities. So I'm going to show you how we do this activity and then when we're done, I will talk to you about some extensions and variations. Today we're going to be learning about some animals. We're going to look at some pictures of animals, okay? Now, tell me if you know what this animal yeah. is. Where does it live, do you know? In the jungle. It lives in the savanna in Africa. Do you know what it eats? Leaves. Yeah. And it's very special because it has a long neck. Why? Because it is really long. Mm -hmm. Why do you think it has a long neck? I don't know. So that it can reach into the trees and eat the leaves that are high up. Do you know what it has on its body? Fur. And it's warm-blooded and it has a backbone so it is a mammal. Mammal. Right. Can you keep it over there? Um, mammal. Okay. Do you know what this is? A chimpanzee. Right, it's a chimpanzee. What color is it? Black and cute and white. Mm -hmm. Do you know where it lives? In the jungle. It lives in the forest. Do you know what it eats? Leaves. Leaves and fruit. And what does it have on its body? Fur. And it's warm-blooded, so we call it? Mammal. Mammal, right. Let's keep it here. Can you put it here because we're going to do some matching later, okay? Now, do you know this animal? Lion and it's a mammal. Right, how do you know it's a mammal? Because it has a backbone. And it's got what on its body? Fur. And it's warm-blooded, okay? And it eats meat. That's right. What color is it? It's brown, do white you know, brown. Do you know where it lives? In the jungle. In the savanna in Africa. Why are we in the mm -hmm. savannah? How about this? Tiger is and it's a mammal and it eats leaves. It eats meat. Eats meat and it lives in the savannas too. This one lives in the jungle. Yeah. <laughs> and how do you know it's a mammal? Because it has a backbone and it lives in the jungle. And it's got what on its body? Fur. Right. And this is what? Hyena. Hyena. And what color is it? Do you actually take pictures of real ones? Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, do you know what color Did it is? Did they chase you? No, they're from the internet. Mm. Do you know what color it is? Brown and light brown. Do you know what they eat? They eat people. They eat meat. But they eat all the leftover meat, whatever's left over by the lion. They eat the bones, they eat the skin and things like that whatever's left over by the bigger animals. And do you know what it has on its body? Can you Fair see? And it belongs to the giraffe team. So it is what? Mammal. That's right. Where does it live? Do you know? In the savannas. Yeah, that's right. The same place. Now, I have some pictures here. Can you match them?
Okay, so Anna, today we have learned about the animals that have hair on their body and they're warm-blooded with a backbone and we call them? Can you say it loudly? Mama! That's right. Anytime you want to take this again, you know where it's kept. Could you help me to tidy? Yes. Hey Anna, we're going to be learning about some animals and I want to see if you remember anything about them. Okay? Do you remember what this is? Giraffe. What can you tell me about the giraffe? It's long to reach the leaves. Mm -hmm. What else? Has to eat leaves. Okay. Do you remember where it lives? In the savannas. Right. And which animal family does it belong to? Giraffes. Family. How do you know that? Because it has a backbone. And? And it... What does it have on its body? Fur. Okay. And it has white stripes. Okay. Can you keep it here? A little bit up because we're going to do some matching, okay? Do you remember this? Hyena. What can you tell me about the hyena? It has ears. Mm -hmm. It has fur on the body. Mm -hmm. And it has a backbone and it's a mammal. Where does it live? In the forest. Savannah. The savannah. What does it eat? Mm, the leftover that the lions eat. That's right. What's this? A tiger and it lives in the jungle. Mm -hmm. And it has fur and it has black stripes. And it has a backbone and it's a, la it's a mammal. Okay. What are you going to tell me about this animal? It's a lion and you can... And it eats the meat mm -hmm. and it's furry and it doesn't have any stripes but it has a, a lot of hair around the face. Do you know what it's called? The hair around the face? No. We call it a mane. A mane. Mm -hmm. And what is it, uh, where does it live? It lives in the savannas in mm -hmm. Africa. And which family does it belong to? Mammal. Mm -hmm. How do you know that? Because it has a backbone, and this is a belongs to the mammals, and it has fur is black, mm -hmm. and it has a backbone, and that's why it belongs what's, to the mammals. What's it called, though? The high, uh, Do you remember? Chimpanzee. 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 That's right. Now I'm going to give you some word cards. I want to see if you can read them to me, and then match it. Can you read this? Lion, okay. Tiger, Pansy, Nina, Giraffe. Okay, now this you can use to check your work and make sure you did it correctly. Giraffe, Pansy, mm -hmm. Lion, Nina. Mm -hmm. Okay, should we make it a bit neat and we can go over our work, okay? Can you read for me? Giraffe, hyena, tiger, lion, chimpanzee. Okay, so today you learned about the animal family of mammals. And anytime you want to take this again, it's on the shelf and you can take it. Would you like to help me to tidy up? Yeah. Okay, thank you. The great part about this material is that just in case she does make a mistake, and she mismatches the word tags, okay? When she's checking her work and she's matching it, she will be able to see her mistake and she can fix it herself. And that is the best way for the child to learn. That's the control of error, is this control card. All Montessori materials have an inbuilt control of error, which gives the child independence in their learning. Now, I'm gonna link a video to the control of error so if you don't know already you can learn more about it it's above here and it will also be in the description box once the child has done their matching and everything is you know they, they feel like I'm, I'm good I've done it it's really important to go over the work and have them reread it for one it gives them practice in reading for secondly it lets them see in case they missed a mistake that they might have made. And when you come to that point, you can just highlight and say, mm, do you think this is correct? 
Do you want to have a closer look? And that's when they'll see that, oops, I made a mistake, let me fix this. All right. So all during the process, just in case she does make a mistake along the way, you don't have to worry. You do not have to point it out at that time. Let things flow. And when the time comes, she will see for herself, fix that mistake by herself. And that's what ensures that this mistake will not repeat itself. It really solidifies that learning for her. I hope you enjoyed those activities. Now we have cards that are available for reptiles, for mammals, for fish, for mollusks, for insects, for birds. So, you know, you can do this with all kinds of uh, animals and introduce them to the different species and they can explore. And you can even incorporate pictures of animals that your child is interested in. I've told you before in previous videos that we have um, this material is available for sale from us an immediate download. I will add the link in the description box below. So if you are ready to get started with this activity with your child or with your children at school, all you have to do is click and download and you can print and laminate and you have your sets ready to go. And once you've done this, it's a really great idea to introduce children to actual videos of these animals in their habitat. If you look at the pictures, we do not use, in Montessori, we do not use cartoons. We use actual pictures of animals in their habitat. You won't see an animal in an unnatural setting, in a zoo or crossing a road. It should be a picture that's of an animal in their natural setting, as realistic as possible showing the features that we are talking about, those should be displayed. So try and show them videos, expose them to books, uh, give them craft activities about mammals if that's what you've been working with. Give them pictures and then they can write down the names of the animals. A lot of children don't like writing when you know it's an actual language activity, but if we present it to them in combination with culture, you'll be amazed how many of them will enjoy the writing process. Um, it also helps them to memorize the spellings of these sight words and expands their vocabulary and their writing capabilities. So in Montessori culture we have a very specific color coding. Anything that is about mammals will be mounted on a red piece of paper. If it's fish it will be light green, if it's birds it will be light blue, um, I will put those, that information in the description box for you so that if you choose to make this material, then you will know exactly what color coding to follow. Another idea, if you have models of animals, you can let the children group them into what, they, what group they think they belong to. Is this a mammal? Is it a reptile? Where would this belong? Um, you can also play a game, you know, games like that. Give them random pictures without any color coding so that they can look at the features and see if they can group these animals. A really great idea that I've done in the past with my children is let them choose one of these animals that they're really interested in. And we do a deep dive into learning about this animal their habitats, their eating habits, their, uh, you know, what are their young called, what are their families called, and we do a whole project. We can take it up for a couple of weeks. So that's really interesting as well. And you will see how, you know, curious your child is and the kind of questions they will come up with are amazing. It's fine if you don't know the answers immediately. That's totally okay. It's good to explore this together and find the answers together. Even if you're in school and your child asks you a question and you don't know the answer, it's totally fine. You can tell them, you know what, I actually don't know. I'm going to find out and then I'll share this information with you tomorrow. Culture is a really a lot about uh, exchanging information with children, satisfying their curiosity, encouraging it to go further and further. So you want to be on a learning journey as well with your child. I hope you've enjoyed learning about the loosely grouped terminology cards. I hope you'll try it out. Let us know how it goes. If you've liked this video, please do hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and keep coming back. I have so many more videos coming for you. Until we meet again, have a beautiful day.